Okay, so today's pepper review is going to be on the yellow monster pepper. So let's take a closer look at that. Nah. Let's take a closer look at the plant if I can actually show it to you because it got too heavy and it snapped. Now this is the first time this has actually happened to me with this type with my pepper plants. I've never had this happen. So let's take a closer look at it. And let's see if it's justifiable for snapping like that. I mean Anyway, this pepper is called the yellow monster pepper. And you can see I got all these wild tomato plants growing around it. But here's one of them right here, and it has got blossom end rot. So here's what it looks like. Let's do go over the plant first. Even though it's snapped over here, unfortunately, it's literally snapped right in half. I'm going to let it grow to the end of the year, so hopefully it'll finish growing out before we get our first frost. But I'm going to pull this pepper off. We're going to taste test it in a semi-green state, semi-yellow state. It didn't get the full size, probably because it literally snapped off the plant, and so you're not going to get the full size pepper. This one actually came true. Now, I've grown this now for a couple of years, and I've had problems growing it. The first two, I believe I've been growing it now for two years. This is my third year. My first two attempts were basically fails. The first attempt I made it, I tried to grow this. I didn't get any peppers off it before we got our first frost. My second attempt, I got something totally different. It came out more like a golden Marconi pepper. And there is a golden Marconi. It looked just like it. And if I taste tested it and remembered, it was basically tasting the same way. So I, I didn't have any luck with this pepper for the last couple of years. This is the first year I'm actually having luck with it. It's actually producing a pepper that looks correct. So let's go over the plant profile. The leaf shape is kind of strange because the leaf coming out of this, it's a regular leaf type, but it's just a very large type of leaf. It's not broad leaf. When I say broad leaf, usually back here at the back part of the leaf, it usually has these lobes that come out. And with regular leaf, you don't have that but it's still a wide leaf. And then with narrow leaf, you don't have that, but it's a very narrow profile on the leaf all the way through the leaf. So just so you understand why I show you that with the leaves. It's not very important, but I really want to give you something to help you identify the plant with so you know that your seeds are correctly packaged and you're growing what you supposedly bought. The stem on it, it's a waxy smooth stem, just like you would see on a regular bell pepper plant. It's basically the same thing. There's no purpling in the stem that I can tell. None at all. Maybe just a hair right there at the node. There might be, but it does. I can't really see it, but it doesn't look like it. It just snapped right off. Unbelievable. So that's usually a good sign if you're getting that on the pepper plant. It just leans over and snaps the whole plant because the weight of the pepper snapped it. I guess that's a good sign that this is coming true. This is one of them. Here's the other one, but this one looks like it, something happened to it. It could have been blossom end rot. It could have been an insect damage. It could be anything, really, at this point. So, pretty much, this is still edible, but actually, maybe I will do it to this one and let this other one ripen up here. Now, this is a small one. These peppers, from what I've read, can get almost a foot long and really wide, like six to eight inches wide. These peppers can actually get absolutely massive this is like the giant pepper of giant peppers if you want to grow something that's really big this is supposedly the pepper you want to do it with but as you can see it did form correctly this year it's a nice bell shape that's what it's supposed to look like not like past videos i've done and i in fact i don't even think i loaded up a couple of them because the peppers didn't phenotype correctly 
they were coming out like Marconi's or something else. It just didn't look like this. Didn't look like what was in the package. So I didn't even put the video up. So, I mean, if the pepper is that far outside of what I bought, I don't even shoot a video on it. Because it's not the right pepper at all. And I have done it and uploaded it and realized later that it was the wrong pepper. So it has happened, but I really try to avoid that now. I won't even show the pepper. But this is what it should look like. This is supposed to be the the monster yellow? No, giant yellow monster, I think it's called. Or yellow monster. I'll put the right name in the description. You'll be able to see what it looks like. But we'll try and taste test this one first. Because I'm going to open this one up anyway. And it should be good enough. The upper half of this pepper should still be good and it should be fine. I, I want this one to fully ripen so I can get decent seeds out of it. But that's it. That's that's the other one that it looks like. And it'll eventually turn fully yellow. But the thing about this pepper I want to point out to you before I actually turn you around and taste test it. One of the characteristics of this pepper that I look for to make sure it is the correct phenotype and the correct plant is you see these indentations at the top. You see them? It kind of has that all the way around, has that indentation. That is the true version of this pepper. That's what you want to see when you're growing this. You see anything else coming out of that? If you see something like, say, that coming out, that's not the right shape. You don't want to see that. It's like a regular bell pepper. You want to see something like this. You want that, that marbling mixing of green and yellow look to it. That's the effect you want. That is a true real version of this yellow monster pepper or monster yellow or whatever it's called that's what you want to see so let's turn you around and give you a taste test okay so let's take a closer look at the monster yellow as we walk you back here get a little more privacy and here is the monster yellow and as you can see, that's what it should look like when you grow these peppers. Now, this one's not that big of a pepper. From what I read, these peppers can get quite huge. And I have seen pictures of these where they are absolutely enormous. But it's very hard to find images for it because you don't know what to type into your Google search to actually find this pepper. Giant yellow, yellow monster, monster yellow. It's very hard to find actual images of people growing this. So I will eventually get this up on the images on Google images and that way you can always look at this pepper and find it when you do your monster yellow pepper search or yellow monster I'll make sure I cover those and you'll be able to pull that up on Google images so this is what it looks like and you can see there's that nice yellow coming in there and there's a nice green color and as it gets ripens goes from a green to a yellow it gets these beautiful marbling effect between the the yellow and the green and really that is the classic look you want for this pepper so if you're going to go to the market and you grow a lot of these and you want to bring them to the market and sell it the best time in my opinion for aesthetics is to get it to that marbly effect where it looks kind of like that you want that green mixed with the yellow it makes it look very interesting very attractive it's very pleasing to the eye, and it will pull people to your table a lot more that way than if you were to just pick these green and sell them. You don't want to do that. you got to get the eye for people to want to at least look at it. You also want to get them, too, when they're at their largest, so you can really get people to come over like, what in the name is that thing? You know, like, wow, that is absolutely enormous. And these peppers will get enormous, but they are a very long season pepper. This pepper has basically been on this plant since probably the mid July and it's now what mid October <laughs> I just picked it now just to give you an idea on how long these peppers will sit on these plants for and the longer the pepper sits on the plant the longer of a risk you take of it getting attacked like I'm my peppers are getting attacked by insects eating holes in the bottom of the peppers and things like that then they're getting mold on them and then your fruit is basically ruined because once your plant gets once you pierce that pepper it gets a hole in it from an insect, whether the insect eats the seeds or not. Once it makes that hole in the pepper, you end up with this kind of problem. The seeds don't develop. Okay? You don't want those seeds to... It's like an egg. It's got to be absolutely sterile and pure for those seeds to properly develop. 
And that's what happens. You lose all your seeds because of one hole in that pepper. You're probably better off if you see a hole, put a piece of duct tape on it or something so it stays sealed. Because once the insect does mix that hole, that's the end of the pepper. Every, every time. You get little to almost no seeds out of it. Plus, you don't get to eat the fruit. It's damaged. One little hole can damage that whole fruit. And if these peppers are going to sit on your plant for, I don't know, if they're going to sit on your plant for three or four months, you better have the right environment there where it can sit there safe from all these other problems. The mold, the blight, the insects that come in and do it, the birds that want to blow holes in it, the rats are chewing on your peppers. I mean, there's all kinds of problems you end up with peppers that take three to three to four months to actually develop and these peppers take a long time because they got to build up the shape and the mass of it and believe me when I tell you this is a small one this is a little pepper compared to what these can get these can get absolutely enormous you see they can get up to a foot long and like six inches wide just to give you an idea on how massive this pepper can get so if you ever enter a large vegetable contest and you want to grow something that gets going to get very large, this would be the pepper you really want to focus on because this thing will get absolutely enormous. But again, the longer it's on your plant, the more of a risk you take from insects and birds and everything else blowing holes in it. So let's give it a taste test. I already have one that I opened up because the bottom was obviously damaged by insects. I don't think it was blossom end rot. It looked like insect damage to me. And then that insect damage gets mold on it, and then that ends up just destroying the pepper. So I broke all that off. We're at the very top of it now. I'll show you. The, I'll eat this, and then we'll take a look at the placenta a little better and try to discuss what's going on with that. So let's give it a bite. Okay, first of all, we want to make sure we're clear on this. It's a sweet pepper, so we are not covering any kind of heat at all. It's absolutely a sweet pepper. Now, the taste of it. I don't know if this is going to apply from year to year. It could be that maybe this pepper was damaged. I really don't want to open up the other pepper yet. I want that to kind of ripen in my, in my house and let it fully ripen so I could get decent seeds from it for next year. You, know, you can see the seeds in here got damaged because of the insects. Once you get that hole in the pepper, that's what happens. Your, whole, your seeds are basically destroyed on it. There are a few in the back. I'll try to save those, but pretty much the pepper is ruined. Now... As far as taste, it's really kind of strange. It, 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 it's, the texture on it is very much the same as like a bell pepper. It's very much. A little lighter. It was a little more moist and a little bit more chewy, if that makes any sense. It was really crispy and it crunched up, but it had like a little bit different of an effect to it. The wall thickness on this is kind of thin for a pepper this size, so that's a little strange too. Does have a little bit of a tangy flavor. Let me take another bite as I try to build up the flavor for this review. It also has a an undertone to it, which is a little strange. It's not bad. It's not a bad undertone or make you sick or anything, but there is like an earthy type of a flavor undertone or something floating around with this pepper after you eat it. Now, it's not an unknown undertone like something only this pepper does. You do taste it in different pepper varieties from time to time. It has that kind of flavor in it. There's some kind of an undertone flavor. If you cook with this pepper and you're going to make like sausage and eggs and stuff like that and you're going to use this pepper, you're not even going to, don't even worry about it because that flavor would just disappear. As soon as you start cooking with these, there, that flavor goes. But eating them raw and putting them in salads, yeah, there is a little bit of strangeness there. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Don't let that scare you. I'm just letting you know there's something else going on there besides the green bell pepper experience. And it's a little different here. Sweetness was a little low. It wasn't terribly sweet, but it wasn't terribly bad. I, I did have a little bit of sweetness in it. It wasn't like totally flavorless, though my first one or two bites off of this, off the side, was a little flavorless. It didn't really have much of a flavor at all. So I'm kind of noticing that a little more with these yellow peppers. They, they tend to be a little bit on a flavorless side. They're not as rich in flavor as the red ones. But I don't know, maybe that's unique to yellow peppers. But so far, that's where we stand as far as a flavor profile. So anyway, the best I could describe it, the flavor on it is has a slightly tangy flavor. Very, very, very slightly. Not, And I say tangy, it's sort of like it's hitting that region of your tongue where things that are tangy will hit 
So when I say tangy, I'm re really referring to the area of your tongue that's being affected. There is an undertone to it, kind of unique to itself. The aftertaste, too, has a little bit of a... Ah, this is strange. I, I don't want to make you think it tastes like this, but it does taste a little like... If you ever, like, chop up eggs, hard-boiled eggs, and you're, you kind of take a spoonful or two before you add the mayonnaise... It's kind of got that hard-boiled egg flavor to it a little bit with the yolk, and you grind that up a little. It almost tastes like that a little bit, very, very slightly. So there's almost like a sulfur type of a flavor to it. It's not bad or anything. It doesn't stick around. It's not killing. It You, you can slightly pick that up, very, very ever so slightly. It's very strange. The flavor in general was kind of on the bland side. It's kind of neutral in flavor. It wasn't very strong tasting. Didn't really taste like pepper per se it didn't really had a slight pepper flavor but very low in the pepper taste to it again that could just be because the plant broke it got attacked by insects now we're going to grow this out for a few years we're going to see if we can pick the flavor back up on us i will definitely come back to this pepper in coming years maybe two years from now i'll do another taste test on it we'll see if the flavor developed or if I do develop a flavor a lot better, we're, we'll do a taste test whenever that happens. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to review the pepper again and again. But if I do get a better flavor out of it and it's an amazing tasting pepper, yeah, we'll check it out again. We'll revisit this pepper. But, yeah, that's it. I mean, I don't know what else to say about these sweet peppers other than that flavor that's coming around to it. I've been wanting to review this pepper for a while now. And again, I haven't had any luck. This is my first year of real true luck with it. And this is about as far as I got because it took forever for this pepper to actually produce a pepper. You, you really got to get this plant started in January, grow it under grow lights all the way up until your last frost. Get that plant out there, start giving it fertilizer, give it the best soil. You really got to get this plant fired up like in by june or july you got to see peppers like this hanging by like june or july so when august comes and the light starts backing off it, you'll get large peppers from it but you got to get started very early for this one trust me it's threw me off a few times i'm thinking oh the plant's gonna get big i haven't had any luck for the last two years third year yeah i guess i got one or two Anyway, that was your pepper review for the yellow monster or the monster yellow. I'm not sure exactly. I got to look it up online and I'll put the right information in the title and description. But don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Take care.